What's up guys, it's BT here and this is a review of the Bear Dynamic DT990 Pros. This pair of headphones is becoming increasingly popular in the gaming community because of, well, Ninja. And recently I've been seeing more and more streamers wearing them so I wanted to see what the hype was behind them. Are they really good or is this just another brand deal turned into a fad? These headphones are coming in at around $180 and come in two different versions, the 80 ohm and the 250 ohm version and I'll tell you guys which one to use later on and why. So let's go over the design of these headphones. They've got that iconic black color with the white grill inside that Bear Dynamic is known for. When you're wearing these, people are gonna know. The ear cups themselves are oval in shape and have that sexy silver velour padding which are very comfortable and surprisingly, they don't get that hot during extended gaming sessions which is what we're all looking for at the end of the day when we're gaming. The headband has a nice clamping force on it so you won't be snatching these off your head or when you're just moving around from monitor to monitor or during like an intense battle, these are gonna stay put. Now the headband up top has faux leather that can be replaced by just snapping it off if it gets worn over time. You've got these wires coming down off the headband into the ear cup so be careful that you don't catch these on anything or else it'll be GG for these headphones. The cable is coiled and is not detached which I don't like because if something happens, it's another GG. With replaceable cables, you can like just swap them out if something goes wrong. But uh, here, if this goes out, you're kind of done. And I'm just not a fan of that. In 2019, we need detachable cords. It's got a regular aux jack allowing you to plug it directly into your computer sound card if need be. And it comes with a quarter inch adapter to plug it into an amp. Overall, the lightness combined with the comfortable headband and the ear cups make for an enjoyable wearing experience overall. So let's talk a little bit about the sound and the differences between the 80 ohm and the 250 ohm. So if you're gonna be plugging these straight into a source like your phone or your computer, then go with the 80 ohm. If you have like an amp and just want a little bit less distortion, go with the 250 ohm. Ohms is the power needed to power the headphones and most computers can't produce 250 ohms of power to these headphones, which is why you need an amp to boost the signal. I'll be dropping some cheap amp options down below for you guys as well as always. I'm personally using the Loxjai P20, which is around $80 and it can power these with no problem. Music wise though, these are balanced studio headphones with a slight emphasis on treble, which gives them that airiness that translate to being a good stereo gaming headset. At times though, the treble can be piercing I found. It happens, but not too often. These are open back headphones, so there won't be a lot of bass, but there will be less fatigue when wearing these because you won't have that bass beating down on your eardrums causing you to need to like take a break from gaming. These sound average with most genres of music and excel in musicality where there's like a lot of instruments being played like jazz and classical. These are just so-so for like rap and pop in my opinion because of the lack of bass that's associated with open back headphones. But that kind of goes with the territory when you're like dealing with an open back pair of headphones. So that's nothing new. I found for gaming open back headphones like these are the best. You're going to hear explosions but you're not gonna feel them, if that makes sense. It's not gonna be like a Razer or HyperX Cloud or Astro headset out there, but more of a subtle gaming experience that you might have to get used to if you're coming from a strictly gaming headset background. There's great spatial awareness with these headphones. They aren't super wide when it comes to soundstage, but they are wide enough to get the job done, and then some. I had no problems placing my enemies in game and destroying them. So are these just a hype train fad or are they actually good gaming headphones? And I have to say, these are very good headphones, sprinkled with a little bit of hype, but that doesn't change the fact that these are still really good headphones. You're getting that great bare dynamic build construction with comfortable velour pads that don't get hot over time. For $180, they are a great buy based off of those reasons alone, but there are cheaper options out there that will give you a similar experience, I feel. All right, guys, that is gonna do it. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. It has been your boy, BT, saying peace. See you in the next one, guys.